Satan. That's why he continually accuses us. Satan hates you. Satan hates me. But God loves us. Amen. What is hatred? It is unjustified, malignant, abhorrence, detested, despising, loathing, deep seated. 
deep-seated ill feeling towards another. It's enmity. It is actually the reason for opposition as well. Um, sometimes you hate people, that's why you're opposing. Mm. The antonym for hatred is love and affection. Help me say love and affection. Love and affection. Hatred is intense hostility. It is a strong dislike. And we're going to see in Titus chapter 3 that this is what we used to be. This is what we used to be. We used to want people to fall and to fail. But now we've changed in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 That was our previous life. Amen. Amen. Put them in mind to be subject to principalities and powers, to obey magistrates, to be ready to every good work, to speak evil of no man, to be no brawlers, but gentle, showing all meekness unto all men. For we ourselves also were sometimes foolish, disobedient, deceived, serving diverse lusts and pleasures, living in malice and envy, hateful and end. <laughs> Still, that wasn't enough. <laughs> hateful and hating one another. But after that kindness, after that the kind, sorry, but after that the kindness and love of God, our Savior toward man appeared. But after that, the kindness, that the kindness and love of God, our Savior toward men appeared. And he goes on and on and on. Hatred. Someone say hatred. Hatred. Wow. Now. To hate something is actually, can actually be good. Alright? In fact, in, in the Bible, hatred is spoken of more in a good sense than in an evil sense. Okay? But we're talking about the work of the flesh here. But let's just give some examples where hatred is considered something good. And, you know, if, if God hates something, then we ought to hate it as well. Amen. And the Bible says in the book of Proverbs chapter 6, verse 16 to 19, that these things, these six things, the, the Lord hate. <laughs> Yea, seven are an abomination unto him. Proud look, lying tongue, hands that shed innocent blood. That's abortion, by the way. It's not just, I killed somebody. That's also abortion as well. Amen. People don't want to look at abortion for what it is. It's murder. It is a shedding of innocent blood. And heart, that divisive, wicked imagination. Feet, that are swift to mischief, a false witness, speaking lies. That's not just the sin, that's the person that God hates. A false witness. He hates the witness, the person. You know, some people think that God doesn't hate people. God sometimes hates people. Yeah, true. And he wants to change them. Yeah. He hates what they stand for, everything they stand for. Yeah. And he desires to change them. So, a false witness, a speech line, and then he, so a person again. All right? That soweth discord among brethren. Wow. Don't want to be in that line of fire. God hates those things. And seven are an abomination unto him. In the book of Isaiah chapter 61 verse 8, God hates robbery for burnt offering. God hates that we hate one another and they come and Give a sacrifice to God. God hates robbery for burnt offering. He hates it when his children are mistreated. God hates it. If someone says, well, Lord, I'm... Remember when, when the man came to David and he said, ha, 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 I'm responsible for Saul's death. What did David do? He gave him a flower? He said, yes, that's, that's that man who's been chasing me all along. Ah, today I rejoice with you, mate. Here's a flower for you. Come and sit down with me. Let's eat. What did they do to him? He had him killed. How dare you touch God's anointed? 
even though Saul was a wicked man. God, he hates robbery for burnt offering. We can't try to maneuver through God, you know. What else does God hate? He says of his son, which is himself. Thou hast loved righteousness. And what does he hate? God has hated iniquity. God loves righteousness. He hates iniquity. What else does God hate? What else does Jesus hate? Jesus hates the deeds of the Nicolaitans. He hates the deeds. There's a lot of deeds, a lot of practices today that people have accepted, even the children of God have accepted, that God hates. And he detests it. So there's something that God hates. God hates Esau. He hates everything that Esau represents. But he loves Jacob. But we'll come to Jacob. He hates Esau. But he loves Jacob. So when people tell you that, you know, God doesn't hate anything, that's a lie. God hates many things. And, and hate is spoken about in a good sense. In the Bible more than it's spoken about in a bad sense. But what we're going to explore today, very quickly, in a second, is hate in a bad sense. But let me just give you a few more. In fact, the book of Proverbs, chapter 8, verse 13 says, The fear of the Lord is to hate evil. Then it says, Pride, arrogancy, and the evil way, and the fraud mouth, do I hate. Do you hate that? Then let's not do it. If we hate it, we don't do it. Forward mouth, pride, arrogancy. God hates it. The fear of the Lord is to hate evil. Do you hate evil? Amen. Give me more gusto than that. Do you hate evil? Amen. 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 Yes. Praise God. I think we're thinking, isn't it? John chapter 12, verse 25. He that hateth his life in this world shall what? Keep it unto life eternal. So, hate is good. In this sense here. Luke 14, 26 and 27 talks about you are not Jesus' disciple if you come to him and you cannot hate your father, you can't hate your mother, you can't hate your wife, you can't hate your brethren, you can't hate your sisters, you can't hate even your own life. Then you can't be Christ's disciple. You know, tough words in the Bible. Amen. But they're the words of life. Amen. My, these words are really tough. And another scripture also, Matthew 6, 24. It talks about you not being able to serve two masters. Now, listen carefully to this one. Because what will it do? For either he will hate the one and love the other or else. Or else. He will hold to the one and despise the other. Don't miss the or else. So either... He will hate the one and love the other. Or else. That's what else he'll do. So he'll do what? He will hold to the one and despise the other. And we're going to come to that in a second. But now we're going to just quickly talk about, in fact, just before that, David also, he hates backsliding. Mm. Do you hate backsliding? Amen. Do you hate those times when you're backsliding your life? Because yeah. David hates backsliding. He said, I will set no wicked thing before. Mm. Mine eyes, I hate the work of them that turn aside. It shall not cleave to me. It shall not cleave to me. Sometimes I slip, but I don't like this way of life. I've got to come back to where I belong. That way of life will not cleave unto me. It tries, and we're in a wicked world that tries to cleave unto us, but it shall not cleave unto us. That he says, a fraud heart shall depart from me. I will not know a wicked person. I will not know a wicked person. Now, we're going to test today to see whether we really do love God. Okay? Because most of the hatred really is against God. Even when you vent hatred against a person, it's against God. Now, let's start to look at the hatred in a contrary way. Leviticus 19, 17. I'm just going to read off, read off these scriptures first and then... I'm just going to quickly talk about it, and then we're going to move on. So, 
Hatred is a work of the flesh. Galatians 5. It is murder. 1 John 3.15. We'll look at that very quickly in a second. Hatred is cloaked by deceit. The Bible speaks in the book of, book of Proverbs chapter 10 verse 8. And it says that his wickedness shall be showed by the whole congregation. Even though he hideth hatred with lying lips. Amen. And he utter of slander. That sort of person's a fool. But his wickedness shall be shown to all the congregation. Attention will catch up. And the whole congregation will see the wickedness of such a person. Because that hatred is hidden in the heart. Sometimes we hide things in the heart. But eventually will come out to light. What's in darkness will come to the light. It leads to deceit. Don't read Proverbs 26, 24 to 25. The haters dissemble with their lips. They pretend basically. Right? They speak fair words. Okay? They speak fair words, but they're far from you. It embitters life. Proverbs 15, 17. It stirs up strife. Proverbs 10, 12. And it's also forbidden as well. As we see here in Leviticus 7, 19, 17. This is what it says. Thou shalt not hate thy brother in thine heart. Thou shalt in any wise rebuke thy neighbor and not suffer sin upon him. That's quite interesting, isn't it? Because people who hate actually don't say anything to correct someone. They leave them to get on with their sin. You know what the Bible says? Whom God loves, he chases. Those who he calls his son, he chases. Hear you know what the Bible says? The one who spares the rod, hateth his son. The one who spares the rod, he hates his son. I don't care about the ideologies of the world. The Bible is the Bible. Yes. What God says is true. Amen. It doesn't matter how old-fashioned it seems, it's still true. Amen. Nothing's changed. God remains the same. Amen. His word remains the same. It cannot change, otherwise it's not God. So the one who, who spares that rod hates his child. Wow. That's quite an interesting thing to know, isn't it? Now, it also says as well. So basically, make sure you correct something. That's right. But in the spirit of yes. meekness. So not, yes, I've been armed to correct now. So here I go. It has to be in the spirit of meekness. And what should you do? Considering thyself, lest what? Thou also be tempted. But you can't leave your brother to walk in sin. You rebuke him. You correct him, but in the spirit of meekness. Some people prefer just to leave someone because they don't want trouble. I don't want to be looked at as this and looked at as that. I don't want to be looked at as a corrector. Well, the Bible says that you hate him. If you don't correct him, you hate him. Can we talk Bible here? Amen. If you don't correct somebody, you hate them. Yeah. Especially if they're in a sin and you know that they're walking in a sin. And you just leave them, I don't want trouble. I don't want trouble. I'll be the good guy. Well, you hate them. You're a good guy where you are, but you hate them. Naturally, people will gravitate to those who don't tell them off. That's right. <laughs> Naturally. Well, that don't mean that they love you. Because people who truly love you will correct you. Because they can see danger. So if you don't want to be corrected, then you don't want to be loved. Amen. So, don't hate your brother in thine heart. Make sure that you rebuke thy neighbor in need and not suffer sin upon him. 1 John 4.20 If a man say, I love God, and hateth his brother, he is a liar. For he that loveth not his brother whom he hath seen, how can he love God whom he hath not seen? Whoever hateth his brother, 1 John 3, 15, is a murderer. And ye know that no murderer have eternal life abiding in him. You can't be in this congregation and hate each other. Otherwise your call for eternal life is false. We can't be in this congregation and hate each other. We must love each other. Otherwise your call for eternal life is false. God is raising up a challenge in your life that will meet the adversaries of your life yeah. and will deal with those adversaries. You see, when we talk about it just a little later on, I will show you about Jacob and Leah and Rachel. 
something quite important indeed about Jacob and Leah and Rachel. Matthew 5, 44. But I say unto you, love your enemies. Bless them that curse you. Do good to them that hate you. And pray for them which despitefully use you. Colossians 3, 8. But now ye also put off all these. Anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy communication. Out of your mouth. Don't read 1 Peter. Chapter 2, verse 1. Let's put away malice, evil speaking, envy, and so on. Put those things away. There are some people who hate, who hate good people. Remember Ahab? And Joseph had said to him, have you got any prophets around who can show us the way to go? And Ahab said, what? I, I have one, but, 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 I hate him. Why do I hate him? Because he only prophesies gloom and doom. See that? Sometimes people don't like people who prophesy Safe, safety and salvation. Every time we go to church, just do and do, do and do. Get away from the world, get away from the world, get away from the world. Don't touch, don't touch, don't touch. <laughs> they keep prophesying doom and gloom. No, they, pro they love you. Amen. They're telling you if you go out, you're going to get killed. Yeah. You know what they hear that? If you know you're going to get killed that day, you know what someone's telling you? Don't go out unless you get killed. You prefer that they say, go on, go out, you'll be alright. <laughs> you prefer that? And they hate you then. In Psalm chapter 69 verse 4. They that hate me without a cause are more than the hairs of my head. They that would destroy me. You've got many enemies, you know. You've got, you got plenty of enemies. If you could count the hairs on your head, you count your enemies, possibly. <laughs> You've got many enemies around you. See, thank God for the house of God. This is where we're instructed. You can't hate and have Christ. Yeah. This is where we're instructed, so we all check ourselves, say, okay, 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 get myself right in Jesus' name. Lord, help me to love. Yeah. This is where you get corrected. Yeah. You go out there, hello, I love you, I'm on your side, they hate you. Yeah. They hate you. Oh, I've known my friend for many years at work. If that person is not in Christ, one day, they don't want to repent, one day they're going to turn against you. Mark this day. Yeah. Mark this day, I told you so. Yeah. They're going to turn against you. If they're not in Christ, they're not repentful. The body that you have, oh, I love this person, even more than my church brethren. You're deceived. You're deceived. One day it will catch up with you. And then you'll see for your own self that the only place where there's true love is a place where that hatred is being checked. <laughs> love everyone. About the house of God. You're deceiving yourself. One day it's going to catch up. Oh, Pastor, I've had a friend for many, many, many years. Oh, it's going to catch up with you. You put that friend on the side, the day of battle comes. You ask that friend which side they want to be on, Jesus' side or that side, they're going to oppose you. Yes, Don't they be your friend all your life? Yes, Anyone who's an enemy of Christ is your enemy. Yes, We've got to learn to love them. Amen. That doesn't mean that you, shouldn't, you should be deceived. Some people love people outside and they love their own brethren. God said, how can you say you love God if you don't see you don't love your brother? Mm. Well, you have seen. Am I making sense so far? Yeah. What else does it say as well? In Micah chapter 3 verse 2, there are some people who hate the good and love the evil. Sad. Some people actually prefer to love those who are evil. And they hate those who are good. They don't like people who warn them. They remove themselves from such people. I pray that you love those who are good. Amen. Turn, please, if you may, to the book of Genesis as we finish. Book of Genesis. God says, I love those who love me, and those who seek me early shall find me. But God also loves the world. And he gave his only begotten son. Mm. And whoever believes upon him should not perish but have everlasting life. So hate can be hidden in the heart. But it shall be made manifest. You find yourself gossiping. You find yourself slandering someone's name. Slandering somebody. There's something there wrong. <laughs> the very sound of their name repulses you. 
for the whole day, your day's ruined. Because you heard some one person's name. You ever been there? Yeah. You just heard that person. The day was going well. Then the name came in. And for the whole day, the rest of the day was ruined because of one name. So let me just quickly advise you as to the sort of things that bring hate. What, why do people hate? Number one, because people don't agree with them. Because people don't agree with them. You don't have to agree with me. I don't have to agree with you. I hope you'll agree with God. I don't have to agree with me, you don't have to agree with me. But I hope you'll agree with God. Some things you may say I don't agree with. Some things I might say you don't agree with. I'll leave it at that. You don't, you don't start building a campaign against me. Because I don't agree like you do. That's the immaturity, isn't it? Yeah. Just because I don't agree with you. Some people, they hate people because they don't, they're not on my side on this. They've tried with their emotion to try and manipulate people, but people say no. Oh, well, I don't really think that that's the case. Okay, that's what That's just how, that's how I feel. Oh, yeah, I understand. And then they'll try to manipulate you. All right? They'll try to play with you. And then one day they segregate, oh, I, I hate that person. And everyone who doesn't agree with them becomes a hate object. I hate, I hate. Second reason is also because of jealousy, competition, envy. Which, in which a hate is nurtured. When people are competing with each other, when people are jealous of each other, envying one another, vainglory and all sorts of stuff, then you, <laughs> hate is being nurtured. You don't have to be jealous that some, somebody has something. It does come to all of us, doesn't it? Yeah. Who's clean in this house? And it's never come to you. It does come to all of us. Yeah, it does come. What do you do with it? What do you do with it? You reject it. It does come. It, you, you feel boy. You don't mind that person. Ooh, uh, uh, what me? So you say, shut up. I bind that thought in the name of Jesus. I reject that thought. It will not cleave to me. It will not cleave to me. You reject jealousy. You reject envy. Someone competing with you, let them have it. There's plenty more for you, don't worry. <laughs> let them have it. Let them have it. Yes, we do struggle with these things. Amen? Amen. But you must speak against it. You mustn't let it cleave to you. It's the key thing. Don't let it hold on to you. Don't let it become part of you. All other reasons. Because people are embarrassed and belittled. That's another reason why they hate, yeah? You know, a lot of these things is, is feelings, but if the hate, if the emotion becomes strong enough, the feeling turns to an action. Yeah. Yeah. Right? It becomes an action. But it's feelings. In fact, it's not, it's not even just your feelings. It's feelings about what other people are thinking about you. Yeah. All right? What, what was other people thinking about how they think about me? It's the feelings. That affects a lot of people. You see? So you've got to be aware of this. And don't take it on. Another thing that also brings hatred is betrayal. When people feel betrayed. Yeah? No, he didn't do it. He should have represented me, but he went against what I said. But he's supposed to be my friend. When my friend went to date me. Oh, your friend will come against you. Feel betrayed, and so hate starts to arise. You start hating the people. But you must be very careful indeed. We're going to read Genesis and 29 right now. You've got to be very careful indeed. You've got to learn to break these feelings early. Don't let contention. You see, the, the place where you're going to know it is, is when you start to feel like a resentment in you. And it's at that point that you've got to deal with it. Right? When you feel the resentment, because the next thing that's going to happen is that it's going to arise, it's going to rise in you, and it's going to become a root of bitterness that will eventually spring up and then will trouble you, it will poison you, it will suck the spirit out of you, 
and it will also affect others. Many will be defiled as a result of that root of bitterness that springs up and then troubles you. So you want to learn when you see it at these early stages, yeah. when you feel this resentment, when you can't hear someone's name, that's when you're going to fling yourself on your knees and cry out to God and say, Lord, break in this evil feeling and let it not cleave to me. Yeah. Don't you feel the fight sometimes? You get there's a fight going on and you don't want this fault, but the fault trying to come on, you feel you're right, you justify yourself and you fight again. You say, no, to God be the glory. Yeah. And there's a continual fight. Until God breaks it. Because yeah. everything you do, you've got to continue to do it. Yeah. Right? Re means continue. Repent. Resist. So, so you can push and then push back. Push again. Yeah. Everything is re. Restore. You've got to continue. Receive. Renew. Otherwise, you're going to find yourself. In a perpetual hatred, the book of Ezekiel said, you're going to find yourself moving closer and closer to hatred and eventually it catches you, the root of bitterness springs up and it poisons you, sucks out the spirit out of your life. And it affects other people as well. So we don't like to be bitter by ourselves. We like, we like to have a party of bitterness. So we invite everyone to the party. Not everybody wants to come, but you force people into the party. Your gate crashing them. Yeah. Help me read from Genesis chapter 29, please. Help me read from verse 16. I want to show you something very quickly. That's why the Bible says you've got to look diligently. Look diligently at your life. Lest any man fail of the grace of God. Lest any root of bitterness Bring it up, trouble you, thereby many be defiled. The reason why people catch that bitterness disease is because they weren't looking diligently at their lives. They weren't watching their lives to make sure that there isn't any resentment, anything crooked. Make the crooked road straight. Amen. They were looking, they weren't looking. And so this thing was creeping all the time. They're in church. Offering up sacrifice of fools. They're in church. They're robbery. They're offering robbery for sacrifice. They weren't looking at their lives. They weren't checking themselves and saying, there's a point, there's an issue that I've got there. I must deal with that issue. Lord, continue to bombard this issue until it's gone. Amen. They weren't looking diligently. They, were, they may have been looking, they may have thought of it, but they weren't looking diligently yeah. with heart and mind. So it caught on to them eventually. Help me read, please. Verse 16, and let's finish. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mark it. Leah was not most beautiful. Rachel was beautiful. Wow, lovely she was. Oh, naturally. <laughs> Naturally, oh, 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 naturally. Now you see a beautiful woman, and you see one that's also beautiful. What are you going for? The one that looks beautiful. Mm. That's what we do. Oh, she looks, she looks better than she. So I'm going for she. And then she give you help. <laughs> she give you help. She would have been better. But she gave up because she was beautiful. She would look about carnal eyes. Yeah. That's nothing wrong with having an attractive person, please. If you want to go for an attractive person, that's fine. But mark it. Beauty is vain. <laughs> mark it very carefully. If it's the beauty that you married her for, nothing else, you're in trouble. Because beauty, like all the women, they're fashioning themselves to look the most beautiful. They spend 10 hours combing and dressing themselves and making themselves a, oh, and they go to the street, oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> But that beauty is vain. Yeah. You just spent 10 hours of vanity. Mm -hmm. We better spend 10 hours in the Bible. Yeah. <laughs> Every part of the face. Yeah. Oh, 
she looks beautiful. <laughs> mm. Well, naturally, you go for the beautiful looking one. Oh, come on. You tell me. Oh, this woman looks beautiful. This one don't look so beautiful. You don't know that one don't look so beautiful. I'm talking to you, man. I know your wife's in there, sorry. Right. Well, I must admit, partly the reason why I went for Liz is because she was beautiful. Partly. Not until I said partly. Partly. Now, look carefully. So, Rachel was beautiful. Leah was tender eyed. Ooh, not so beautiful. Now, you must understand something about Jacob. He's a trickster. He's a wheeler dealer. <laughs> Del boy. <laughs> he knows how to trick. He's a trickster. He's been manipulating situations for years. Now, he's met his match. His uncle is more of a trickster than him. <laughs> so if you're bad, Jacob, God's going to catch up with you later. You're going to be someone badder than you. Alright? And you know what? You can't make any noise about it. Because <laughs> that's what you're used to doing to others as well. Jacob was a good man. Leah was a good, um, Leah was a good lady. Rachel was a good lady as well. I'm sure they all made heaven in Jesus' name. I'm quite sure of that. But we can learn spiritual lessons here. Yeah. I'm going to learn spiritual lessons. So go on. So Rachel was beautiful and well favored. And, and Jacob loved Rachel. And what? And said, I will, I will serve thee seven years for Rachel, thy younger daughter. And Laban said, What? Well, it is better that I give her to thee than that I should give her to another man. Abide with me. <laughs> you, you didn't even catch that one, did you? <laughs> All right. And Jacob, what? Served seven years. For Rachel, and they seemed unto him what? But a few days for the love he had for her. Seven years felt like a few days. Imagine it. Imagine seven years. It's not like you've not even been here for three years. Seven years. And it felt like anything. It felt like a few days. That's love. What kind of love was that? And Jacob said unto Laban, Give me. My wife, for my days are fulfilled, that I may go unto her. What happened? And the band gathered together all the men of the place and made a feast. And it came to pass in the evening that he looked and he took Leah, his daughter. Now, that should be Rachel there, isn't it? There must be a typing error. He took Leah, his daughter, and what? Brought her in to him. And he went in unto her. What happened there? Did he get to see her? <laughs> kind of closet thing they had in those days. <laughs> he didn't get to see her. All he did was know her. You know what know her means. He, he, he just knew her. Oh, he woke up alright in the morning first. And then what happened? <laughs> and Laban gave unto his daughter Leah Zilpha, his maid, for an handmaid. And it came to pass that in the morning, behold, it was Leah! Ah! I've been tricked. Ah, ah, ah. What is this that thou hast done unto me? That's what he said to Laban. Did not I serve thee for Rachel? Wherefore then? Has thou beguiled me? Oh, you're beguiling yourself. <laughs> you know about this job, don't you? Oh, well, why do you beguile me? You see, it's in these challenges that God's going to reveal something about you. Yeah. We're not always mature to see things about us. You know, when you read the book of John, chapter 3, it tells you a lot. Well, in fact, first of all, I'm just going to read Deuteronomy, chapter 21. It says in verse 15, If a man have two wives, one beloved, and another hated, and another hated, and they have borne him children, both the beloved and the hated. And if the firstborn son be hers that was hated, then it shall be when he maketh his sons to inherit that which he hath, that he may not make the son of the beloved firstborn before the son of the hated, which is indeed the firstborn. You see what God's highlighted here? There's things that we love. 
and someone can hold it over everything else. Yeah, and also, don't do this. You're, you're, you, are, you are breaking a very important spiritual principle. Yes. And he, but he shall acknowledge the son of the hated for the firstborn. Yes. Yeah? By giving him a double portion of all that he had. For he is the beginning of his reign. Yes. The right of the firstborn is his. Now, listen to also Romans chapter 1, 25. Who changed the truth of God into a lie and worshipped and served the creature more, more than the creator who is blessed forever. But he says more. You're going to hold on to one and despise the other. And he goes on to say, for this cause God gave them up unto vile affections. For even their women did change the natural use into that which is not, which is against nature. And likewise also the men, even the natural use of the women, burned in their lust one toward another. Men with men working that which is unseemly and receiving in themselves that recompense of their error which was meet. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, 